Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to answer a simple question. What will actually happen to most of the famous stars that we all know and love such as Beetlejuice, Rigel and so on. Maybe you don't love them, but I definitely do. So have you ever wondered what will actually occur to those stars? Will they become supernova and turn into black holes? Will they turn into neutron stars? Today you're going to find out because we're going to investigate this scientifically. Welcome to What The Math. Now first of all I actually wanted to point out that there's actually this cool grid thingy that shows you uh, various stars of various masses including red dwarfs, normal stars and big stars that basically shows you um, what will happen to them if you basically run the simulation for a really long time like for example if I were to run this at 1 million years per second you would see that within a few million years all of these bigger stars would start getting larger and larger brighter and brighter and eventually kind of sort of expand to the point where they would actually absorb everything now that may not be super realistic and might actually be a bug because I don't even know what this is but it looks very beautiful but what I really wanted to do is to actually take a look at some of the more popular stars on the list here and to see what would actually happen to them in the future. So here's the thing. Some of these stars are main sequence stars, uh, like for example, our own sun, obviously, or um, a star right here, Alpha Centauri A. All of these stars are main sequence, basically. They're in their main part of their life. They're, uh, they're still kind of not really near the end where you would expect them to uh, grow really big or, or uh, go supernova. But some stars like Betelgeuse, for example, are actually near the end of their life so they're not main sequence anymore these stars used to be much 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 more massive when they were main sequence so we can't really um use the same sort of strategy or the same analysis as i'm going to explain to you in a second to these massive stars so unfortunately stars like Betelgeuse, stars like vy uh, canis majoris and also stars like ey scutai which is the biggest star we've found in our galaxy so far these three stars are hypergiants or supergiants and uh, they are nearing the end of their lives. All of these will go supernova, and it's very likely that all three of these will create neutron stars. But uh, main sequence stars can be analyzed using this graph that you see on the screen right now, um, which basically shows you, depending on their initial mass, and which is indicator right here, and their initial metallicity, which unfortunately we don't have in the game, but what it refers to is how much of non-hydrogen and non-helium is there in the star. So if this star was basically composed of a lot of iron and nickel on the inside, it would have high metallicity. So our sun actually does have a somewhat high metallicity, but not super high. And some stars, they're mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. Uh, so uh, this is something we're going to ignore for now. We're only going to focus on mass. And these are the stars that I've placed right here, so including things like Algo, Regulus, Vega, uh, Sirius, Alpha Centauri, um, Proxima Centauri, Procyon, Altair, and of course our Sun as well, and the Bernard star. All of these stars that are actually some of our closest neighbors and some of the brightest stars in our sky, every single one of them will become a white dwarf. They will just kind of expand over time. And let's see if we can maybe simulate this here with one of the bigger stars. Uh, they'll just expand over time and become tiny, tiny white dwarfs. All of their um, outer shell will basically escape into the outer uh, star system. And uh, for the most part, only the core made up of uh, essentially the generate electron matter will remain creating white dwarf very similar to a star that's very close to us known as Sirius B. So every single one of these will become a white dwarf which I'm basically doing by uh, adding a lot of years to their lives and causing them to change into white dwarfs and so there you go there they are all of them are basically tiny white dwarfs now and this will happen anywhere between a few uh, billion years to something like uh, trillions of years for some of the smaller stars like Bernard star which is expected to live several trillion years before it actually becomes a white dwarf and the more massive the white dwarf the smaller it is in size so stars like Bernard star uh, which is right here are going to create the biggest uh, uh, white dwarfs in terms of actual size. 
with the most massive star, which I believe was a Kerner, uh, creating the smallest white dwarfs. All right, so that's uh, essentially most of these stars in our neighborhood. Now let's talk about other stars. So anything that has initial mass of about 10 masses of sun up to approximately uh, 26, 27 masses of sun will actually become uh, a neutron star or possibly even a pulsar. So this includes stars like the infamous UIS Qtai, uh, Betelgeuse, Antares, um, also Deneb. Rigel, and is there anything else here? No, I think that's all I added for now. So basically, some of the more massive stars, not super massive, but uh, more massive than, uh, I guess, than our sun, and then most of the stars in our neighborhood, will eventually go supernova, they'll actually have a supernova, and uh, then create a beautiful neutron star that I'm going to try to create by adding a lot of years to Betelgeuse again and clicking this button and maybe also getting rid of the supernova although let it just explode and do its own thing and let's see if we can actually turn this into a neutron star and unfortunately the game is failing me at uh, creating the actual neutron star even though it created a pulsar out of this Betelgeuse with a very beautiful supernova in the middle but it's a little bit too large to be an actual neutron star although I guess one way we could do this is by clicking on uh, the button right here that is supposed to make a pulsar right away. So I think if I do that, it will turn it into a neutron star. Will it? No? Maybe? Oh, come on game, you can do better than this. All right, so this seems to be a bug. It's supposed to create a neutron star. It's not working. Well, the game failed me at that, so we might have to do this manually by essentially erasing all of these objects and pretending that it did happen, that it actually did create something very similar to a neutron star that hopefully oh there we go i did i did it i created at least one so spica was actually able to be turned into an actual legit um neutron star also known as a pulsar in this case it's a pulsar so there we go so that's uh, an object that's about 13 kilometers in radius uh 1.3 masses of sun and uh, this is what's going to happen to all of these objects now, what happens if you have a lot more mass? Well, this is when things get a little bit more interesting. So, there is a few stars out there that are actually exceptionally massive. There's a few of them here. Uh, we have a star known as Eta Carina A. We also have another star called Eta Carina B. And lastly, we have a supermassive star known as R136A1. This is a, in, in a neighboring galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud. Now, these stars will do something a little bit different. Also, um, our beautiful VY Canis Majoris might do the same. When these stars go supernova, they will very, very likely create black holes. So, here it really depends on two things. Obviously, it depends on the metallicity, but it also depends on the fact that a star between about 130 to about 280 masses might actually not create a black hole. As a matter of fact, this star right here at the Carina might end up just exploding uh, and creating something known as hypernova. So there's a very, very likely chance that in some cases, and you can actually see this on the graph right there, it's, it's the pink thingy known as no remnants. It might actually explode and turn into the, uh, essentially the material that gets dispersed throughout uh, the galaxy. So here, it's very possible that this object might actually explode and basically disappear forever. It will create such a massive hypernova that it will basically disintegrate into nothingness. So this is not even a supernova, this will be a hypernova. Uh, some other objects, like um, Eta Carina AB and also this one right here, known as R136A1, will very likely collapse and create a black hole. Now, if they're not too massive, if their mass is only between about 28 to about 39 masses of, uh, of our sun, the black holes will be a little bit less massive, um, possibly five to about 10 masses of sun, and uh, they will be created from the collapse of the actual star, so it will be a somewhat slow process. However, a more massive star like this one right here will create a black hole almost right away. So we're going to demonstrate this by basically changing the age here, and boom. And this is now, as you can see, a black hole right there in the middle. It's about seven masses of sun, and this is what's going to happen to Eta Carina B. 
R36A1, which is right there, is going to, it's actually the most massive star we've found so far. It's about 350 masses of sun. This, uh, this is a, uh, the game shows you the old value. The more, the more recent value is about 350 or maybe about 325 masses of sun. When, it, when this actually explodes, the hypernova will be so massive and the black hole will be so massive that it will create a tremendous amount of energy. And let's actually demonstrate this by doing this right now. And there we go. A super massive, uh, or I guess somewhat massive black hole of about 15 masses of sun and a very, very powerful supernova. And the last star we have here is VY Canis Majoris. And even though it's not as massive as those other stars, it used to be a lot more massive when it was main sequence. And so when this explodes, it will also very likely create a black hole. So let's try this as well by giving it some age here. And, and there we go. There's a black hole right there. It's about eight masses of sun, and it's it's a little bit smaller than the other black holes. So these particular stars will create a very, very large supernova, or possibly hypernova, and uh, will then leave behind uh, a, a, something called a stellar mass black hole. So a black hole that's anywhere between uh, five to maybe about 20 masses of our sun. And since we haven't really found any stars more massive than that, we don't really know what's going to happen to them. But for the most part, those are essentially the four situations uh, that any star will end up in. So either become a white dwarf, a neutral star, or a black hole. Or in some cases, if the star is anywhere between about 130 to about 260 masses of sun, they might actually completely explode and disappear into nothingness creating a hypernova and anyway so that's all i wanted to show you in this video and wanted to kind of give you an idea of what will actually happen to all of these stars that you might be familiar with from the previous videos or just in general and hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you'll subscribe if you still haven't share this video with your friends and come back here tomorrow to learn something else using video games thank you so much for watching guys i appreciate all of your support i'll see you in the next video space out and as always bye bye